Yeah, how you doing, Brad? It's good to speak to you. I was just saying to Curtis, it's been a, a long time since I saw you guys. I think it was Birmingham last time you came to the UK. It's been a, a few years since then. Yeah, yeah it's been. Uh, how many years has it been, Brad? I think it's been two. It was going to be two years if we were there now. So, yeah, a little over two years. Yeah, we need to get you guys back over once all this, all this mess is over. Yeah, we, it, to, uh, we were scheduled for it, but I think now we're scheduled for next year. So, so we'll be there. Yeah, fingers crossed. But yeah, how are you guys holding up in these crazy times? Because with new music out, it must be so frustrating for you guys not to be able to get out on the road and, and play all this new stuff. Well, we've been able to play uh, a lot of the stuff, uh, doing a lot of like virtual performances, you know, on Zoom and things like that. So that's been cool. Um, being able to release new music while we've been sitting still at home has actually been kind of great because people are ready to consume uh, all kinds of new stuff right now. And uh, we're excited that we can help people out and put some new music out there. And people want to hear it now more than ever. So that's, that part of it is exciting. Yeah. And you've got this new EP group on that available everywhere now. So it's it's been quite a while since we heard kind of a full length project from you guys, um, particularly of new music anyway. So how much do you feel you've evolved since that Dear Life album and how much can we hear that in the new music? Do you think? Yeah, I think it's it's pretty consistent. Um, our our messages, you know, of family, positivity, that kind of stuff is very consistent with the Dear Life record. But um, Curtis's kids are a lot older now than what they were. Obviously, mine are too. But we're we're kind of on the Dear Life record. We were at slightly different uh, stages of of fatherhood, I guess you could say. And um, now we've kind of synced up a little more with his oldest boy and my my youngest boy being kind of in similar places in, in life. And there's some songs like One Day You'll Get It, uh, Your Mama, on this record that might not have made it on the dear life album but now they they spoke much more uh, true to both of our lives this time around yeah and releasing eps as opposed to albums seems to be the way to do it nowadays because there's so much focus on the streaming world and giving each song as much attention as possible so for you guys how much of an effect has it had in terms of fan engagement for each, each track to release it in the ep format you think it's been a good decision doing it that way yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I think so. It's, it's exciting to be able to put out music more often, you know. Um, I mean, it's been a few years since we put out a, a record, and putting out new music as frequently as possible is the most exciting way for an artist to, to record. Or for us, I should speak for myself, but it's, it's always exciting to put out new music, and waiting years between projects is, is like, painful. <laughs> so, so this is nice. Yeah. And um, the only song that you didn't have a hand in writing, Brad, was Your Mama, which you mentioned earlier, obviously, Ben West, Tyler Hubbard, Josh Miller, Troy Burgess. So what was it about that song that stood out for you guys where you thought, OK, this one has to be on the project? Yeah, I mean, there's so many great songs about moms in, in country music. Oh, you know, Mama Tried is one of the most famous country songs ever. And um, we'd never heard it, though. We never heard it where a song about moms was actually sung to the kids instead of to the mom. It's usually about the mom to the mom. And um, we just thought this was such a cool take. And of course, I'm always messing with my boys and bragging to them and saying how, you know, it sucks to be them because I, I got lucky and I got to marry the most beautiful woman in the world. And now they <laughs> never can and all that stuff. So it felt very natural for me to have a conversation to my boys about their mama um, on the record. And it did for Curtis as well, obviously. It was just a, it's such a message that High Valley fans would expect to hear and that we would want to give them, but in, in a different way than I've ever heard it um, done before. Yeah, and you released an acoustic version of it as well for Mother's Day and stripped the production right back. And I just love that version so much. So what was the thinking behind that and, and that special project? Um, it's nice to, it's fun to kind of strip things back and uh, kind of just remember and remind people where we come from. And, you know, we, we grew up making music in the living room with just, you know, a couple of guitars and a lot of vocals. Our whole family sings and 
And it's fun to kind of go back to that every now and then. And um, yeah, that's, that's why we do it. It's, it's fun and it's how we grew up. Yeah. And I know you, you guys posted on social media a few days ago that it's been quite cool to see how all of these songs are now even more significant in modern times to how they were when you wrote them. And, and River Still Running is a perfect example of that because it gives you that perspective through all of this madness that's going on at the moment. So I guess when you wrote that, you didn't have a clue that <laughs> this was going to happen. I wrote that with Corey Crowder, who produces uh, FGL, and uh, Randy Montana, who, when we wrote it, had just had a six-week number one with that Luke Combs, Beer Never Broke My Heart song. And, um, you know, those guys are very good at writing for the middle middle America, just kind of your average normal person, right? And we were trying to write a song about one, and I know we say this like beating a dead horse, but we uh, High Valley is always about positivity, no matter, you know, every day when I go in the writing room, that's what I want to write. I want something that's uplifting. And we're trying to mesh that kind of positivity that we've had with like Young Forever and that kind of stuff, but mesh it with a more middle America kind of down home kind of way of saying it. And um, Randy really helps um, bring out that kind of side in me. And it was so much fun writing it. And like you said, now it applies more to people than it probably ever would have. And it's kind of cheesy and trite and uh, cliche, maybe to say, you know, as long as the sun comes up, it's going to be a good day. But I do think that that's the high valley way. That's the ultra glass half full kind of positive way of thinking. And um, that's that's what we wanted to say with the song. It's it's one of my favorite songs. I I still um, I listened to it the other day driving down the road um, on a sunny day, and it just felt it felt right. And I wanted to speak to you about um, getting Gillian Edwards involved as a guest vocalist as well on Show Me The Way because I love Gillian as a vocalist, I think she's awesome. So for anyone who's not familiar with Gillian, tell us a little bit about her and how that relationship came about between you guys. Yeah, uh, well Gillian Edwards, we actually did a, a couple shows with her, oh man Brad, what was that, like seven years ago or something? Yeah, six or seven, yeah. Uh, it was a while ago, and um, that's kind of when we discovered her, and, and I I love her vocals. Um, I, I think her voice is absolutely beautiful, and that was the first time I heard it, and, and uh, my wife and I have been a fan of her, hers for many years, listening to her records, and so, I mean, we, we reached out and asked if she'd want to be a part of the, the project and, and sing on Show Me The Way, and, and she was willing to do it, so um, I was thrilled. Uh, She's an amazing singer and having her on the record is pretty, pretty special. <laughs> and just moving back to the single now, Grew Up On That, you released a music video for it not too long ago, which was a, a really kind of open book music video for you guys. It was very personal, showed a lot of your childhood memories and, and things you grew up on. So how much fun was that to put together and, and how special was that experience? Yeah, it was a really full circle moment it's it's absolutely true that that we grew up um our, our original band rehearsals were in a garage um an auto body shop where our drummer's dad you know painted people's cars and we we couldn't um get all the way back up home to uh to that shop to do it but um uh, thankfully, we were able to record it on some land that I have out here, and so it was kind of a special thing, um, just to kind of still keep it in the family. We've done that lately a lot. We've recorded at Curtis's uh, in his backyard at, at his like neighbor's barn for single man. We've recorded in my backyard for your mama, and now we record at my land. So it's it's been cool that years from now we'll be able to look back on these videos, and there will be these personal touches. And of course, with all the pictures in the video it was about as personal as you can get it hoping that people could follow the progress of Curtis you know destroying our dad's truck on the farm back in the day all the way <laughs> to destroying the razor on my farm now so it's cool. I love it. and um, obviously grew up on that is a, a focus in terms of a radio single at the moment but are there other songs on the EP that you've got in mind for the radio singles Uh, I'll gladly let radio play every one of the songs, but uh, <laughs> I, I, think, I think River's Still Running would be um, a pretty great uh, summer song on the radio. 
How much, how much kind of say do you have in that decision when it comes to you guys and the label? Is it purely down to you guys when it comes to radio single? Uh, I wouldn't say purely down to anybody. It's pretty collaborative between uh, Brad and myself, and we're, you know, we have pretty open conversations with uh, label folks and even management. And, and uh, yeah, we just kind of all work together and try to make the best decision we can. And um, just finally, guys, before I let you go, I need to speak to you about, obviously, long-term plans. We've spoken about the UK and you said that you wanted to come over next year, but have you got kind of touring plans set in stone at the moment? I know it's so difficult to plan anything at the moment, but what's the plan for the rest of this year for you guys? I do. Yeah, um, unfortunately, the, the term set in stone right now is kind of doesn't exist um, <laughs> in, our, in our world. So what we have on paper... Um, we have a lot of shows from 2020 that have been moved to 2021, including UK shows, including an entire UK tour. So if that all stays, um, we'll, you'll be seeing a lot of us uh, next year, and, and I hope it does. Um, good. Right now, we're just trying to, you know, practice what we preach and stay positive amidst all the kind of uncertainty and one of these days it's starting to feel like it's going to happen sooner than later like one of these days i think we'll be back on the road who knows it could it could be a few months or it could be a year but hopefully hopefully it's sooner and later yeah just speak to me a little bit about the the uk market for you guys because you've made a real concerted effort to build a fan base over here and the reaction you've had has been, been really really cool so far so what have you made of the experience of touring in the uk Man, uh, the first time I remember getting like, not maybe the first time, but the most intense time I've ever had goosebumps from a crowd was when we played London. I think it's called Bush Hall. Yeah. Um, and when we went backstage, we've had a lot of encores, but this was like an encore like any other, where it felt like if we didn't come back out, they might run backstage and drag us out. It was kind of... <laughs> Uh, sorry, just uh, somebody's calling me here, and I'm back, and I'm back. Um, so it felt like it was more intense. It wasn't like an encore, like, hey, maybe we want to hear another song. It was like they were literally singing Make You Mine for five minutes straight. So we came back out. <laughs> they, were singing, they were singing the woes. Yeah. There's whoa for like five minutes, and then we came back, and they didn't even stop. We had to like – Ask them to stop so we could sing another song. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I love yeah. It. And I remember playing C to C and we played some little acoustic kind of thing. Um, we, we played all kinds of venues there that year. The first year we opened for Sam Hunt in the main arena. And then anyway, we did this little acoustic thing. We had a song called Ivy UV that hadn't even been released yet. It was just on YouTube. And we started playing it and there was like, I don't know, 50, 100 of the people that were singing along with a song that literally there's no way you could know the words other than if you <laughs> stopped us on, on YouTube. And that's when I, I told our manager and booking agent, I said, man, we need to come back here as often as we can because these people are like hardcore. They'll be with us probably for 50 years, not just for, you know, whenever you've got a song at the top of the chart. So it was uh, it was a breath of fresh air. And. I think my favorite part of the UK and the reason we want to come back so often is because of the lack of country radio. People aren't uh, being told which songs they should know. They just know the entire album. And it makes a, a 90 minute show way more exciting for us because we're not waiting. We're not counting down for those two or three songs. We're, you know, it makes us feel like we're Keith Urban or somebody because they just know every song off that heart that's what we like to hear but fingers crossed we can get you over next year if the uh all this mess clears up but um i'm gonna let you guys go thank you for taking the time to do this today appreciate it and uh yeah thanks yeah, for hopefully, having us hopefully catch up soon when you get over to our shores at some point sounds good man thank you so much yeah, thank man. you thanks guys bye